Shweta Matia. Welcome. Amazing, gorgeous, beautiful, amazing souls from all over the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome. First up, Maya, the little dog of light here, would like to say hello. There you go, you're happy. Yes, you're like, yep. <laughs> Come here. And let me know where you're from. We've got um, Britannia, France. Brittany, France. Awesome. Oh, tu, 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 tu. Um, Australia, amazing, just like me. <laughs> Please let me know. New South Wales, Australia, Sydney, Spain, Switzerland, oh, Cape Town, Nutani City, London, Norway, Lanchester, Vancouver, Canada, Canada, Germany, Poland, Germany, Indonesia, Denmark, ben Belgium, Portugal, Mexico, Queensland, Oklahoma, the UK, New Zealand, Netherlands, England, Canada, Netherlands, Tasmania, Sydney. Oh, I'm loving this as this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful grid of us all over the world. Oh my goodness. Who's excited? Give me a yes if you're excited. And by give me a yes, I mean type it in. Yes, 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 yes. Me too. We're going to have so much fun. Oh, yay. So many yeses. Oh, and so, first of all, I just want to get a bit of a gauge. We've uh, wanted to honor, because last time I checked, there was 478 beautiful souls who had registered for this transmission. So as this has been recorded, some of you are live, some of you will be listening to the recording, some of you are live and will still listen to the recording. <laughs> and wanted to honor every single soul. And together, the whole 478 souls and I, we're creating a beautiful grid all over the world love from dubai hello beautiful soul and co-creating with this divine codex that i'll be sharing and anchoring everything in to the grid so this is a co-created a grid work little beautiful mission for all of us and i'm so excited and honored to have you here now just to get a little bit of a check in um, can you please type in a woohoo, like W O O H O O. <laughs> if this is your first live event, someone's just typed in woohoo anyway. I love it. <laughs> if this is, I'll tell you, <laughs> there's all these woohoos. <laughs> let, me <t> let me tell you why. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Focus. Please type this in only if this is your first live event with me, meaning that you've only ever seen, you know, content online. You haven't actually been in a live transmission with me. Let me know with a woohoo, 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 woohoo. First live, woohoo. Awesome. We've got a lot of first woohoos. Woohoo, woohoo, woohoo. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. Um, well, then I am so honored. And by the way, all those that, that this is not your first, you, I'm so honored you're here too. And so I wanted to take this moment just to set a little bit of a um, intention with you and a perimeter of what is happening and what could happen. So first up, if you're a bit new to my transmissions, then um, at any moment as I'm sharing and I'm, you know, transmitting beautiful beautiful English language, I could stop at any moment and start speaking light language and moving my hands around. And then I'll continue speaking English. Cool. The reason for this is that this is a multi-dimensional transmission. This is going beyond um, uh, the conscious mind into the heart consciousness. And we're co-creating together multi-dimensionally, which means that this transmission is serving many, many, many different versions of you and across different realms and dimensions. This is a multi-dimensional shift. Yeah. And we're working within the field to calibrate this. So there's a graceful transition into the embodiment of the new um, avatar that's available for you as a result of receiving these codes. Cool. So do I have your permission to stop speaking English every now and then and speak light language? Give me a yes if that's all cool. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. The other pieces are with your permission. We would really love to invite you into a sacred 
beautiful temple of light. The temple of light that we're inviting you into is a, um, a beautiful quantum architecture which holds the codes of truly anchoring a mission empire of light, of working within the fifth, sixth, seventh dimensional grids and beyond, and being a part of the full renovation of the grid architecture of this planet. And the temple that we're going to take you into is the temple that I facilitate the New Earth Mission Collective beautiful journey and also um, the Mission Empire journey. So I've got two different beautiful offerings, two different journeys that souls come with me on. And when they come in to receive the codes, the initiations and to truly build, create and lead a Mission Empire of Light, they first come into a temple, a quantum temple, which is filled with all the codes and all the data. And so we would love to invite you. And this is the first time we're doing this at this level. We would like to invite you into the New Earth Mission Collective Temple. And you're going to be able to get a guest pass, basically. Like, here's your little quantum guest pass, put it on, and you'll be able to come in as we're going to be taking you into sections of the, the crystalline temple architecture where certain codes are. And then we're going to be sharing directly with you the purest frequency of those codes. Cool? So, as a bit of fun, here is your pass for today. <laughs> Please reach out and grab it. <laughs> and oh, tu, 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 tu. we welcome you, your soul families, your star families, your mission teams, into the temple of light. Please also know that we honor your frequency. Everything that we are sharing with you is being shared at a level that is fully received by you. And what that means is at every given moment, as we're going to share codes with you, we'll be asking if you feel ready to receive them. Now we are recording this transmission. So as the journey goes along, there'll be initiations and gifts and technologies and activations that we wish to share with you. And if at any moment you feel you're feeling full, meaning you're like, whoa, okay, my energy, like, whoa, I've received a lot, then what we invite you to do is not receive the next, um, the next thing and simply We'll send out a recording of this over the next 48 hours to every single soul who registered and go back and watch the recording and from that time point and receive the initiation then. Does that resonate? Please give me a yes if you're like totally cool to take responsibility for yourself and how you receive. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. There is literally only abundance. You are going to have the recording for a long time. So you can play, cool? There is one more thing that we would like to do with you during this process, offer you if you would like it. And that is this. Right now, the energy has expanded on our planet. For quite some time, there's been a lot of photon light being shared into the planet. And what that means is because there is so much photon light coming onto this planet, and it's literally more than has ever happened in all the history of this planet, billions of years. And because of this photon light that's coming onto the planet, we are offered, um, this is offering us ascension, meaning the light that's coming through is expanding us. It's literally having us turn more into light and transform at a cellular level and transform at an energetic level, fully transform. Now, give me a yes if you've noticed that the energies have been amplified in the last few weeks that you've noticed. Yes, 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 yes. It's like, whoa. Yes, 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 yes. Very much, yes. And so what has happened? Because people have been 
some people have been asking and wondering what's going on. Like, whoa, is there some whiz bang, you know, extra special portal open or, you know, and there's a lot of physical stuff happening for people in inside of this fatigue, you know, like there's a whole bunch of stuff happening and just, whoa, the energy is like pretty full on. So I want to let you know that in 2020, whew, the, the actual quota of the photon light particles expanded on our planet, which means that we got even more photon light, um, you know, that came through onto our planet supporting ascension. And for the last couple of years, that photon light's been working with, with us and allowing us to ascend. And of course, all the other things that we've been called to do, like attend events like this and, and you know, take journeys with people. Now what's happened is the photo light quota has expanded again. And so right now you are being entrained to stabilize into the new photon light quota system. So I'm wanting to let you know this isn't a portal per se. This isn't just a, ooh, it's the equinox, ooh, it's something. This is the new playground. The new playground is inviting us to stabilize and this will happen. Does this make sense? There'll be another shift. So the, the photon light has been turned up. And what we would like to do throughout this beautiful transmission, if you would love this, is support your system to integrate this more. So we're going to work with you, the whole team and I, to expand your very architecture and to work with you to support you integrating this photon light quota so you can stabilize and it can whew, just beautifully integrate and then of course you can continue receiving from this exact quota without as much whoa in your field so i'm getting a yes please great yes please yes 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 great so this is one one of the beautiful gifts Okay, now gorgeous angels. Na ikta ala satai no ita ala ita ala ita. Nuna, nuna, nuna. Na tu yala, na tu yala. I'd love to share a coded story with you. Hoto nati, preparing you for all the initiations. No nati alasatai usutai. And how it is that I came across the activation of my mission to share with you the full grid architecture of anchoring your mission and serving in a very different formation and being able to not required to enter the business grid at all in order to serve and be abundant and fulfill your mission. You see, gosh, we're talking, wow, this is kind of funny. A quarter of a century ago, this little being of light <laughs> had a mission. Uh, when I was growing up in my in my teens, I loved the theater so much. I love performance art. I loved how it could shift, how storytelling, how, you know, really be a beautiful performance could fully shift someone at a cellular level. And so I went to university and studied performing arts and got a bachelor of drama. And inside of this you know, inside of this journey, I had a dream. I had this vision. There was a why I did it. And the why I did it was I dreamed of having a really beautiful 
traveling theater company, a puppet theater company that would travel to the to different primary schools, different high schools. And we'd start off with primary schools. For those of you that are not in Australia, primary schools are the schools that you attend from like the age of five to like the age of, I wanna say 11 or 12, yeah? So I'm not sure what the, there will be different names for them, but the, 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 you know, the earlier years from like five to like 12, right? And so what I saw was, you know, gosh, imagine, I thought to myself, imagine if we could take stories like the classics, Hans Christian Andersen, Brother Grimm, take the stories and up level them, raise their frequency and come and deliver puppet shows that were to install morals, values, heart, to really have children feel compassion, feel love, feel forgiveness, feel generosity, feel kindness for each other. It was just this beautiful dream. And this dream saw me finish university and start a little theater company. And and with a little team that had come together from in university with me, we set off. I was taking like stories, recreating the scripts and writing these funny, awesome, beautiful sort of, you know, like little theater puppet shows and Oh, we started off by doing work with a with an organization called Challenge. Challenge here in Australia runs all of these beautiful um, activities and does all these beautiful work with children with cancer. And so here, all of a sudden, our little, you know, makeshift, makeshift theatre company, puppet theatre company found ourselves co-creating with Challenge to go on a three day camp with them where there was almost 200 children who had cancer. And we were teaching them how to make puppets. We brought in like the, the base of them and the kids got to come into the room and decorate them and paint faces and put hair on them and clothes. And we couldn't believe our eyes. There was hovercrafts outside, horse riding, canoeing. Like there was so many cool activities and here we were and so many of the kids were finding them, their way into our space and sitting there and literally like putting woolen hair, long golden hair. The girls had puppets with long hair, the boys had hair. And what they were doing was they were literally creating puppet versions that they wanted to be. And then they started playing out all sorts of scenarios and living, living out their dream lives through their puppet, pretending that they got to go and do all sorts of stuff that healthy kids got to do. We, it was like time stood still and we looked around and all of these kids were smiling and laughing and playing. In fact, it's funny, we got told by the organizers that on the way home in all the buses, the kids were still playing with their puppets. This brought so much warmth to my heart. Now, in between us running our puppet workshops, we, um, the team and I would be rehearsing our little comedy version of Hansel and Gretel with some additional upgrades to it. And my team was funny as like, oh my gosh, I was just like, Phew. they were really, really funny. And so there we were and we're in, you know, we're in practicing with our puppets in our little room by ourselves. And there's a girl that had been in a wheelchair and we'd watched her for the last day or so. And every time we saw her, she was just connected to all of these tubes and gadgets and stuff. And most of the time she was crying or she was sad. They were often taking her away a lot, like she wasn't able to stay with the group activities. And so here we are, we're practicing Hansel and Gretel and they wheel her in, in the back and let her sit and watch us. And honestly, we didn't even notice them do this because we were so in our little world pissing ourselves laughing, having such a great time rehearsing all the bits that we're going to do. And as we're rehearsing, we hear this <laughs> we're like, what's that? We turn around and we see her at the back of the room in her wheelchair and she's laughing for the first time in a couple of days. We literally see, you know, rosy cheeks. We see light in her face. We see her eyes sparkle. And I'll never forget this moment because I looked at her and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, like this is it. That when we serve others, 
it really is creating moments of time where they are connected to their soul, where they can feel the joy and the bliss of being alive, where they truly get to experience why they came to this planet. And it was so beautiful. All of us, as we rehearsed, we fully melted. And after this beautiful camp experience, I did my very best to put together something to make this happen. You know, we, um, we did a comedy festival, um, beautiful show. We did as much as we could, but get, get this, guys. Like, the truth is, I made $20. $20 in, ta-da, having a beautiful theatre company. And at the time, I was working as a cook, um, cooking Italian food, and that's how I made my money while I was doing all of this other stuff, wanting to, you know, serve and make a, make a difference and, and to get this theatre beautiful vision up and running. And there was this moment where I realised, okay, I'm really good at the theatre stuff, the putting on the show, the, all the delivery stuff. I'm really good at the stuff, you know. And I was like, I'm not so good at all the other pieces. Like if somebody else could do all that for me and get me gigs, I could just rock up to the school and get it done. Yet I had no idea what I was doing when it came to business, when it came to building something and having it get out there in the world. And so I declared to myself that I would go and find out and I got myself a job in sales. I got myself a job. That was how I started selling water purification systems door to door. I kid you not, the hardest form of sales there possibly can be, where I'd rock up with my little kit. And I mean, the appointments were pre-booked, but yet at the same time, we back then, you know, this is quite a long time ago, and direct selling and door-to-door -door selling was around if you're a bit young, you probably wouldn't be aware of it. But, you know, if you're in your 40s and above, you may have remembered people coming to your home and selling all sorts of stuff. So I took this role on selling water purification systems because I truly believed that every single person should drink clean water. I was like Erin Brockovich out, doop, 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 doop. My next mission was let's get this to happen. Let's you know, let's, let's, let's save people's lives and have them drink clean water. And inside of that journey, I consumed every course. I worked with mentors. My own, like the, the man that run the company at the beginning, loved my enthusiasm and let me listen to his whole library. He had so many CD programs. And I would literally listen to them in my car because it was a rep job. So I spent hours every day in my car and I would just listen and listen and listen and receive so much knowledge, doing course after course after course over a few years time and becoming very quickly number one. Yet I didn't become number one because I learned from the courses and I applied the skills. The reason why I actually became number one in that industry was because at the same time as I was realizing that I needed to learn how to get my gift out into the world and learn business, I had had a car accident and messed myself up pretty severely. Like I'm saying, it was pretty full on. I was driving my car, the wheel fell off, not my fault, by the way. The, um, the car rolled five times and when it landed on its feet, my spine was twisted up like choo, 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 choo. And pretty much every single, every single person out there in the general world told me that my case was too severe and could not be cured. And then I came across a man in the mountains who my mum took me to, and he was energetically able to fully realign my spine, reset my whole body back to better than it was before the accident. And he started teaching me all sorts of information about the quantum, about energetics, about all the quantum architecture that that turns like turns energy into matter meaning that when we look at anything that's physical on this planet it first gets created in the quantum and then it is expressed as a physical um, as a physical expression and i was blown away as he was teaching me and sharing with me all of this magic about how we can actually reprogram 
every single part of ourselves. We can go in and fully reprogram our blueprint, the way we think, the emotional worlds that we have, our physical worlds. We can reprogram everything that we truly are, this advanced technology, and that nothing is permanent. Everything is made up of programs. Everything's made up of templates and codes. And I studied with this man for three years, learning NLP, um, um, an advanced version of kinesiology, an advanced version of body work, bowling therapy, touch for health, many other different modalities. He literally had a whole wall full of certificates and had been practicing for a quarter of a century. And I would go there a few times a week and literally met, like study with him. And I was like this little devoted, you know, I did all these courses and then I'd also come into practice and sit and watch him work and partake and see miracles happen. And so what I did was I took all of the knowledge around how to reprogram the blueprint, the template within us, our quantum architecture to match the realities that we wish to materialize which rises like this. <laughs> and I was also learning the skills of business. And with that combination of working within the non-physical and the physical planes together with the unification of it all, I was whew, having things happen that had never happened in the industry. I ended up having my own franchise and then moved into another industry, which was finance. Once again, became number one in that one, built up a finance brokerage, sold that. I share this with you because in 2012, my soul tapped me on the shoulder and said, it's time. It's time for you to teach others how to do this. It's time for you to share this combination of skill in building something sustainable in the physical planes and the quantum architecture of recoding, literally like going in and altering the very energetic blueprints, the consciousness, the vibrational frequencies, everything to show others how to create worlds that exist beyond the current ones, how to create alternate realities for themselves, how to really anchor into how to anchor into the true highest realities timelines and worlds of their choosing and so off i went in 2019 to work with mentors to learn how to have a seminar based beautiful business and I anchored myself into the higher realms of business, the higher realms of business. And just to give you a little bit of a screenshot, we have realms of existence and there are the lower realms, the middle realms and the higher realms in every single world and every reality and every dimension, there are realms, frequency realms, the higher realms are simply realms and versions of reality that have the frequency of love and abundance flowing through them, where the lower realms have the frequency of fear as the dominant frequencies, separation. And so here I was, and from 2012, you know, having this in 2013, launching and running events after events, and teaching people how to do this work within the higher realms of the business grid. And then my own ascension journey, my own evolution journey was expanding more and more. In 2019, my mission family really came online, meaning that my connection to my mission family, my soul family, and beautiful, when I, when I refer to a mission family, I'm referring to the beautiful benevolent beings of light that are co-creating our ascension and our missions with us on this planet. We have a soul, we have a soul family, we have a soul star family that guides us inside of this incarnation. In fact, our soul star family has been with us 
from the birth of our soul, when our first, the first time our soul was birthed into existence, it came into the arms of a beautiful soul star family. And they took us in and they supported us and they worked with us yet. And as this transmission has been in inviting mission souls to come and listen, mission souls are souls that have had many, many, many missions all over the multiverse. Mission souls are birthed from light. And their excitement is to anchor light all over the universe. Literally, it's like, you know, in every incarnation, we are placing light into the grids of wherever we go, whatever planet we go to, whatever galaxy, whatever solar system, whatever universe we go to. Our mission family is the extended version of our family beyond our soul star family and yet inclusive of it. What that means is that as we've been on many different missions, because our soul is not brand new, <laughs> we have met friends. We have lived on different planets in different solar systems. We've done missions all over the place. And of course, yes, many on Earth as well. Yet give me a yes if you know that you've had lifetimes, you've even got memories of lifetimes in other, in other beautiful places, in other planets. Please give me a yes, 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 yes. And so Palladium, Lemurian, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, 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 totally yes. And so with each time that we have done this, we've made friends. We've literally, you know, you could have been born into a soul family that doesn't even exist inside of this, this, um, this, this solar system. But let's just say you were, and say you were taken in by the Palladians and the Palladian beings took you in and taught you and nurtured you. And then, and you spent lifetimes, you know, there. And then you went off on an adventure and you went off on an adventure and you went and lived in a, on a Cturius. And you, you know, you got to spend time with the Cturians and you made a Cturian friends. And then that grew your soul family, your soul, you know, mission family. You went on missions with them. Andromeda, um, Sirius, Lyra, and then of course, beyond this, going beyond those realms, co-creating with dragons, co-creating with the fairy realms, unicorns, all sorts, and going outside of even the universe for some of us and working in other universes, expanding there, meaning that as a multidimensional being, we exist in many different formations and because linear time is simply a construct of the third dimension that in truth time is a field and everything is happening right now parallel alternate so many different possibilities the versions of you that are already in your sixth seventh eighth dimensional architecture exist and they're guiding you the and the versions of you that are say working with the blue avians you know beyond our galaxy are existing right now and so what that means is our mission family is large there is so many that you know it's funny it's like i find for the last few years every year there's more and more and more so many friends and when i connect with them it's a reunion and we all have a different configuration in this yet ultimately when my mission family expanded and i really got to connect deeply and Connecting with my mission family was happening well before 2019, yet in 2019, there was a woo, there was a big shift. And for my own journey, this is when I was unplugging out of the third dimensional grids. And I, I literally, the technology, the architecture, the 3D grid within me was transforming seemingly in front of my eyes disintegrating disappearing and shifting 
and I was finding myself anchoring into the fourth dimensional grid. Now I want to take a little moment to chat about grids with you because naikta alasatai usutai suma 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 ti 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 suikta alahiata na sutui hutuna hutuna As mission souls, we are taking a journey of ascension. Our journey of ascension is literally having us become crystalline, which means that we are ascending, we are receiving more light into every one of our fields. Our emotional body is expanding to more light, which is why there is emotional purging and healing that happens in ascension for the emotional field to vibrate in, in a light formation. The mental body is ascending and letting go of control to hold more light. The heart consciousness is activating. The technology of our heart consciousness is expanding and this is where we operate. Our spiritual, um, our spiritual self is whew, coming online and we have more and more quantum capabilities and quantum access, connection, memories, abilities that go outside of this incarnation where we can, you know, really like in this body have gifts that we did not acquire in this lifetime. They've come from other versions of ourselves in other alternate parallel lifetimes. And as we take this journey of ascension and hold more love, hold more light, quota, where we can stabilize in our home frequencies, love, joy, peace, abundance, divine knowing, hutani sapi titi, service, contribution, presence, naikta ala. Our whole chakra system comes online. All of our chakras become crystalline. Our bones become more crystalline. The codes within our blood, within our bones, come online. We embody more and more and more and more of our multidimensionality and memories. And it's not even memories, access. We literally access different avatar versions of ourself as our soul is existing in many, many different versions of us at the same time. And the more that we embody our soul frequency, we're able to unify and be all those versions, <clears throat> embody exactly them, the way that we embody the skills of and memories of being a five-year-old. And as we do this, we work on the crystalline grids, meaning that our own ascension journey is literally working on sections of the crystalline grids around the planet. And the crystalline grid around the planet is what is birthing and um, birthing and stabilizing the new earth realities, timelines, worlds. This is literally how we are shifting from a 3D world, 4D world, 5D world, and this will continue sixth and seventh dimensional architecture planet and onwards. Yet I wanted to share this with you because each and every one of us are literally connected to an aspect of the crystalline grid that my ascension, my crystalline embodiment is literally instantly having a crystalline effect on the grids. Naikta alasatai usutai. And so is yours. Just by ascending, this is what happens. This is why our own ascension is our primary mission on this planet, because it changes the world as we know it. In fact, the reason why the photon light quota on the planet has increased is because of how many souls right now in this quantum now moment have been able to take that journey, have devoted to their ascensions because of you, it's because of your devotion to your ascension, because of all the work that you have done, because of ah, you taking this journey beautifully and profoundly into your heart, that you're, you have activated more of the crystalline architecture on this planet and now the planet and the collective can actually hold the new photon light quota. Whew. Give me a yes if that resonates. Give me a yes if that feels really good in your heart. Give me a yes if you feel what I'm putting down. Yes, 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 yes. 
Who marked the alasata usutai? Now, when we have a look behind the scenes of physical reality, hutu, yes, yes, yes. Well, yes, there's so many yeses. There are grids upon grids upon grids. Maik ta alasatai. And there are many different versions of our planet. The planet does not exist as one, just like you don't exist as one. There are many versions of you parallel and alternate, and we are shifting into different versions of ourselves constantly with every choice we make. We can go that way or that way, yet the opposite choice exists in the quantum. It is oh, profound, the oh, like infinite possibilities, infinite timelines that are existing, really, truly existing and available. Naikta alasatai. At the end of 2019, the fourth dimensional bridge was activated and I had the honor to co-create this beautiful project with the Turian Council and many other councils of light. The fourth dimensional bridge is a technology architecture and its purpose is to allow multiple realities to be accessed, grids to be accessed in one unified field. So the 3D, the 4D and the 5D grids are all available within one architecture. What that means is that you can go into a 3D grid um, or you can go into a 5D grid or a 4D grid, <clears throat> excuse me. And whatever grid you are in is the environment and that environment will bring out and co-create with you. So we literally co-create realities with the grids that we choose to be in. Right now, on the greater scheme of it, we are in the grid architecture of planet Earth, which means every one of us in this incarnation is an Earthling. None of us are Syrians or Palladians or insert whatever, we are all Earthlings. That doesn't mean that our soul doesn't have other incarnations. It's got many, you know, like, we are actually a universe resident <laughs> with a universe passport and, and many, many different versions of ourselves across our universe, multiverse even. Yet, because we have chosen an earth avatar and anchored into the earth grid, this is how we as a consciousness stream, as a fractal source, are co-creating realities inside of this grid architecture. Mutana suti alahatai wuttu. Nikti ti ti ti, nikti ti ti ti. And as every single soul on this planet has been given an invitation to come out of the 3D grids onto the 4D bridge, into the fifth dimensional grids, passing through fourth dimensional grid architecture, and then to continue their journey into the sixth and seventh grids. We still have access. Right now, there's multiple grids available to us. Here's why. Because there are multiple grids within us. Please know nothing exists outside of us, nothing. We are the 3D grids, the 4D grids, the 5D grids. The fourth dimensional bridge architecture is simply allowing all grids within us to come to the surface. So we can have an experience of the whole quantum field of us, the blueprint that's running the show, the templates, the programs, the codes that are running the show for the purpose of unplugging out of 3D timelines, templates, grid architecture, and being able to anchor into grids that are created with fifth dimensional grid technology. A third dimensional grid looks completely different to a fifth dimensional grid. It is formed with different rules, possibilities, if you would like to put it this way. So within third dimensional architecture, there is linear time, there is right and wrong. There is a perception of duality. And what I mean by a perception of duality is that there is an observation of this is good, this is bad, yeah? 
fourth dimensional architecture shifts the linear time. So the grids of the 4D shift linear time and create circular time. And so this is when we're ascending, this is why, because we go into fourth dimensional grids out of 3D grids and time warps. This is where it's like, whoa, you know, it's like, what? It's March already? Actually, hold on, it's April. <laughs> it's April already. And there's this like reflection of that went really fast, but also, oh my gosh, it feels like this year has been going for years. So much has shifted. Yeah. Give me a yes if or if it feels to you that the that these few months, that these three months, January, February, March, that we've simply shifted through feel like so much happened in those three months. Doesn't feel like just the old three months. Remember what three months used to feel like in 3D? Yeah? Right. So this is fourth dimensional grid architecture. Yet in fourth dimensional grid architecture, yes, we have access to the, we've got the beginnings of true quantum field access. So this is when we start to expand our ability to access the quantum field, channel more, download more, you know, have experiences within the quantum and you know where there's undeniable experiences where we're like there is definitely more to this universe and the physical realms yeah we can feel the presence of beings of light we feel them our body goes hot and cold we go beyond the five senses Maktiala. however in fourth dimensional grid architecture there is still the perception of good and bad In the fifth dimensional grid, that grid is the very beginning of unification of duality. And what that means is, this is where even in our own ascension journey, give me a yes if you've been doing a lot of masculine feminine harmonization, where you've been unifying your masculine feminine inside of your ascension and, and evolution journey. Yes, 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 yes. This is literally 5D work. It's unifying the different pieces, harmonizing the different pieces, knowing that even if I'm in a female body, I have access to my left and right brain, to masculine, feminine energy working in unison. It gets to be one. Now in fifth dimensional consciousness or in fifth dimensional grid architecture, there's a unification. And this is truly the beginning of letting go of true judgment, the beginning of being able to receive and hold a higher love quota, light quota, compassion, forgiveness, you know, all of those beautiful things. And a full anchoring into the unification. Now, this is where the fifth dimensional grid offers us the beginnings of unifying the physical and the non-physical worlds, meaning that in 3D and even 4D, we still put a lot of emphasis on the physical planes of existence. What is physical is real, what is quantum is not. And we want all the physical stuff, you know? It's like, yeah, I can fully channel and I can, you know, meet beautiful beings in the quantum, but I want my stuff, you know? I want my hot six pack and I want my husband and I want my money and I want the car. There's a priority that, does this make sense? That within those grids, and it's the grid within us, we are still in co-creating with that the physical plane of existence is more real than the quantum plane of existence, yeah? Yet in fifth dimensional grid architecture, we unify, we know that they're actually all one, the physical and the non-physical unify. And then this is where the fun begins, because whatever we build consciously in the non-physical quantum planes creates and births worlds, realities. This is where we begin to really embody more of our goddess, God, creator frequency, because we're able to create beyond the pre-existing grids. We create our own grids. I'm going to say this again. We, at this point, truly create our own grids, sovereign, free from the limitations, the hooks, the imprints of the grids that preceded them, free from any of the conditioning of the third dimensional architecture. 
Bell says, I love this, Gabby. Boom, woohoo, yes. Humaktasina. Can you feel this in your heart? This is getting emotional, says Kristen. Yes, Donna. Yes, goosebumps. Manatuni sata. Naikta alasatui. Huma, huma tini tiala satai. Nota. Now, at this level, we are being asked to be more precise with the grids that we co create with, which means clearing, and uh, it's not even clearing, it's evolving the grid architecture within us. And so, for me, the journey of my own ascension, unplugging from the third dimension, which actually was me purging. This is what's interesting. I was purging third dimensional codes, templates, and grids, literally purging them, as many of us did in 2020. 2020 was a year of the great 3D purge, 2021 as well. Yeah, you can relate to this. How much purging have you done in the last couple of years, right? Natusa. And it was literally the blueprint, the quantum architecture. This is why I'm sharing with you that it is our quantum architecture that creates physical reality. And when we go in and we know how to work within the quantum with precision, when we remember how to build worlds, create worlds, and be conscious to know exactly what grid we want to co-create with and clear grids that no longer serve us. Mata, clear templates, identify templates of separation, of judgment, of course, and, and beyond this, identifying any templates and grid architectures environments. Hotona titi. Emma says, how did you purge this and what did it look like? Humakti. So I worked with my mission family and they were literally supporting this at a quantum level and I was available for it. I was going through my own initiations. My mission was coming online because it is my mission to facilitate this for others. I literally have beautiful journeys that people come into where we do this work together. Quantum magic school is such a profound journey of purging and releasing so much architecture of the third D fully being able to activate our multidimensionality and anchor more and more into the fifth dimensional grids. And so to simply answer your question, Emma, I worked with my mission family, my soul family, and did a lot of inner quantum work to shift this, a lot of reflection. As I was purging these pieces, I was very aware of the transformation I was going through, and I had the skills to be able to do the work on YouTube and in um, on YouTube and in Instagram, the um, there's literally like YouTube's probably an easier place to find it. Have a look at um, frequency thrive transmissions. I literally shared for free. I'm not sure how many. Maybe like I'm gonna say maybe nine transmissions that I recorded in 2020 that were sharing different aspects, supporting people to have the ability to do their own conscious purging. The, um, so that's one place you can start as well, if that's helpful. David says, will the purging keep continuing? Still going to. So here is the other piece to it. When we choose the path of love, when we choose the path of heart consciousness, this is where everything escalates and speeds up. And so, there is many pathways of ascension that can feel challenging or be perceived as challenging because there is still a co-creation with contrast, the perception of contrast, the perception. And it is a perception shift. What that means is that when we're still functioning and we have fourth dimensional templates, third dimensional templates, if we have any tiny even bit of judgment on what it means to purge and we perceive purging as a problem the we want to look into that templating and harmonize it so first up as we do more heart consciousness activations and 
I have a beautiful heart consciousness activation on my website for free for anyone that would like to go deeper with that. And of course, that is just the beginning of it. Yet, the so please know heart consciousness activations do support the purge happening differently, the purge happening in higher timelines of love, of ease and grace. And secondly, muta ialahatai suttu. It is fully seeing the purge as a gift and allowing the purge. So I'll never forget this. I remember I was um, <laughs> um, I was experiencing quite a lot of like just the energy was moving a lot through my field. And I remember saying to my soul family, this was a, a, a you know, like a couple of years ago, saying to my soul family, I'm like, fourth man, like, can you give me a break? <laughs> Who here has ever said, give me a break? <laughs> give me a yes if you've asked for a break. <laughs> oh my, yes, 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 me, me, me. And so I was like, fourth, you know. And my soul family said to me, like, um, I was actually already in bed. I was just like, whoa, I feel like I'm going through a huge wormhole in, um, you know, without any g-force suits like i could really feel every cell everything just whoop 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 doing this and my soul family said to me relax receive this this is a gift the light that we are sharing into your field the upgrade that you're undertaking that is creating a purge and expanding your whole architecture is a divine, beautiful gift of light, of love. And receive it. Open every cell. Go into your atoms and literally see your atoms open like flowers. Open your atoms and receive this gift. Oh, and I lied there with this expansion opening my atoms to receive this gift and all of a sudden the intensity disappeared it expanded because i started to receive the upgrade and the gift within a fifth dimensional grid not no longer within a grid of within a 4d grid just by taking this frequency shift i entered a different grid architecture i birthed a different grid of receiving and ever since then when i'm receiving any upgrades or purging i receive them and i see them as a gift and i they are the greatest gift can you imagine we we are taking an ascension what's available for us in one lifetime has taken previous civilizations countless generations we are going through a transformation for those that are able to you know keep receiving in one lifetime look how far you've already come in the last couple of years alone can you imagine where we'll be 10 years from now like oh <sighs> I trust that serves Munatiala. And so, as my precision with grids was expanding, and I could clearly see the grid architecture around me where different things existed within different grid architecture. For example, airports are within the third dimensional grid architecture. They were built within 3D. Doesn't mean we can't travel the higher realms of them, yet ultimately, when we go to an airport, we follow the rules and we follow the rules of time. <laughs> You've got to be on time or you'll miss your flight. What dimension is that in? Of course, 3D. Does this resonate? Now that doesn't mean that we can't go into a 3D grid with love and appreciation and get on a plane and fly yet what you'll see over the next decade is there'll be more and more <clears throat> souls building within the 5d grids there'll be new airlines new schools there already is new hospital like new schools new new arc like new everything and yet the new world will be built within 5d grids not 3d grids within and that means that the 5D grid 
and this is really important, is a grid where we are co-creating non-physical physical, where there's unification. When we build something in the 5D grids, it is a co-creation with all beings of life. Right now, for example, I'm looking for land with my beautiful best friend, and we're going to be building magic camp for kids and just magic camp, like this beautiful 5D dome. And there is a co-creation with the land, asking the land if the land wishes to co-create, if the elementals wish to co-create a project like this, that there is an availability, it's connecting with the trees. Does this make sense? That when we build within the 5D grids, it's different. We are respectful of the whole ecosystem, yeah? And when something's built in the 5D grids, it's quantum is in a different grid architecture. It's a different environment than the 3D grids. Right now, Matusani Piala Satai Utuna Utuna. Thank you, Brittany. She says this is a beautiful transmission. Utuna Kumakti. Right now, all of you are inside of the beautiful New Earth Mission Empire Temple of Light, which is a fifth dimensional inside of a fifth dimensional grid architecture that's linked to six, seven, it's actually linked all the way to 12th dimensional grid architecture. What does it feel like here? You know, share with me, what are, how do you feel being inside of this grid? Please write this into the chat. What are, what are the feelings? What's the emotions? Excited. What are the vibrational frequencies? Happy, grateful, excitement, hutuna, happy, light, sacred, can't do anything wrong, peaceful, blissful, hopeful, beautiful, held, light, expanded, anything's possible, beautiful, peaceful, like home, wholeness, connected, right? Kumak DC, oneness, pure peace. No, 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 no. Beautiful. And this is what now takes me into why I am sharing this transmission. And when we look at business, business was built within what grid architecture? When we look at business as a, as a, um, as a structure, what dimensional grid was business first built in and has been stabilized in? 3D, yes. How do we know this? Because it's been around for a long time. And it also works within the value systems of the third dimension within the structure of the third dimension. It works with linear time. It measures, yes, it's hard work indeed. And yet so many mission souls have had their missions activating, especially over the last few years. And when they look to serve in their missions and create beautiful offerings for the world, to be able to support other people's ascension journeys, healing journeys, to give, to give and share their gifts in the world. The only thing that's been available has been for them to go to business, right? To enter the business grid and learn how to do business. Now, there is nothing wrong with this. Like I said, I entered the business grid a quarter of a century ago and I had a great time and I did beautiful things. And there are many wonderful things inside the business grid that we can take with us and we can take them into a fifth dimensional grid architecture. Yet if we're not going to be building inside of the business grid, what grid do we build in? It's a really good question. <laughs> We build inside of our mission grid. And today we would love to activate your mission grid architecture, take you into your mission grid, support you to anchor into your mission grid, and then invite you to build everything inside of your mission grid. Your mission grid, is literally taking a piece. It's coming in. So when you activate your mission grid and you, and which is a fifth dimensional architecture technology, and 
you anchor into your mission grid and you can take skills from the business grid and place it into your mission grid like content creation yet it changes in the 3d grid content creation is strategic it there's a that you can learn how to create copy you can learn the art of creating content and it's very thought out and you know this is how you do it because when you do it this way this is does that make sense it's very strategic it's created with the mind when we take content creation and by the way i'm talking in marketing right that there's lots and lots of people teaching 3d content creation which is designed to influence it's designed to manipulate yeah now if we take content creation just as a as a beautiful fractal of source consciousness and we allow it to ascend into the fifth dimensional grid it no longer needs to control anyone only in the 3d grids do we need to control in the 5d grid content creation becomes something different it is literally codes of pure light your soul codes your whole soul codex coming to light and turning itself into words and so when you read a piece of content that is birthed from the fifth dimensional grid reading it activates you mutana sikta it is coded it is living consciousness and what it does is it literally works within the digital grids we live in a time and age where we have a physical world and an online world this is new this was this is not um, something that's been around like if we go to ancient um, if we go to atlantis they didn't have an online world i mean yes they communicated telepathically they didn't need the internet however we have a digital world and a physical world and when we take content creation into our mission grid fifth dimensional architecture it is multi-dimensional it is alive it is a living fractal it is a living consciousness that comes to co-create and it recodes the internet which means we don't need to run away from the internet we just get to plant light all over it and create alternate versions of it hotuna there will come a time where we will not need the digital playgrounds anymore we'll show less and less interest in them yet those times are not now when we take sales out of the 3d business grid and we place it into the fifth dimensional mission grid architecture it transforms and it's no longer there to manipulate or control instead it is there to guide lovingly it is abundant it's multi-dimensional it's alive and then instead of having a way to manipulate or control or influence someone's decision with all sorts of tricks it becomes this beautiful way to take someone by the hand and guide them into their next timeline because the next timeline is what's available when someone comes to receive from you. Does that make sense? Does that resonate with you? That it's, we're literally taking, yes, I love this. It's so beautiful, beautiful. When we take marketing, marketing within the 3D business grid serves one purpose, leads, 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 leads. More and which leads to sales right leads and sales leads and sales and even though someone can be super mission driven super heart-centered wanting to make a difference within the business grid within the marketing grid of, of business the driver and the co-creation of frequency has us attach more to the outcome of leads and sales than of service when we take marketing out of the business grid and we place it into the fifth dimensional into our mission fifth dimensional grid it becomes grid work let me explain our marketing is simply us sharing our codes with the world in order for the in order for the world to have a taste a, a, a bit of a taste of what we do and then want to receive more from us right yet 
In the fifth dimensional um, architecture, when we market, we do grid work. We are literally gridding out every time we share codes. Like right now, this transmission in 3D, this transmission would be a sales event, an event where you're coming to a free event that you're coming to where I give you some cool stuff and then at the end I put on a big sales pitch and with all sorts of tricks of the trade you're then feeling this you know you might feel some FOMO or whatever I might do something like hey tonight and tonight only it's normally 2000 but you get it for $50 you know that kind of stuff here in the fifth dimensional um, architecture we don't do sales events we don't do it Instead, what we do is we grid the world. So we get directives from the temples of light that are living consciousness, which are our offerings. The New Earth Mission Collective temple of light inside of my quantum architecture literally requested that this transmission be shared with the world, that the activations we're about to share with you, that everything be shared with the world for free for grid work. So the codes of the, this beautiful empire, like this temple of light, can anchor into the crystalline grids. And the way that we do this is every one of you that's receiving this transmission is receiving it into your body and then projecting it out into the crystalline grids, altering the crystalline grids because each of you is connected to the crystalline grids. And then, when your solar grid is activated and you're stabilized in it and you understand how to build within it, you build a literal legacy. You build temple upon temple upon temple upon temple of light. Some of the temples of light that you build are what we would call an offering. It's like, you know, uh, for, for me, it would be the New Earth Mission Collective is a beautiful offering where you can come and you can make a contribution, a financial contribution to my beautiful Oneness Foundation and receive all the teachings in the temple. Yet I have other temples inside of my mission empire of light. The mission empire of light is literally a quantum architecture within your soul grid that is linked up to an aspect of the crystalline grids. And there can be several parts of the crystalline grids that your mission to work on in this lifetime. You could have many, many, and they're often linked to um, like past civilizations. So if you had lifetimes on Lemuria, um, Atlantis, Avalon, ancient Egypt, ancient Africa, ancient Greece, you know, all the, um, you know, all the different ancient civilizations that created the, the original crystalline grids with creating golden ages of existence. We come in and if we have lifetimes in those other civilizations, we are literally connected to that grid architecture when we activate our soul mission grid and build our mission empire of light within it. Then we are activating, repairing, restoring the crystalline grids and more. This is as we activate these beautiful temples of light with our offerings and then just with the codexes that we're embodying. So when I call back my memories of being in Lemuria and I call back more of my magic from Lemuria, a Lemurian temple of light appears in my mission empire of light. And that's now anchoring the codes of my lifetimes in Lemuria. When I call back into my physical body, my lifetimes in ancient Egypt, the same thing happens. And then there's all these different temples with different codexes, the Atlantean one, the Egyptian one, the Mayan one, the Shambhalan one, ancient Africa, ancient Greece. And then of course, there are temples of light that are our offerings, the beautiful, what we would call a product or, or a service is a living consciousness temple of light. Some of the temples are for us in our mission empire of light. We go into the Lemurian temple and continue to embody more of that codex. Then we take some of the codes from that temple and we take it into a temple that's open to public, so to speak, an offering temple. And I wanna share this because when we look at legacy, 
When we look at the ones that, that have come before us that have left the legacy within the crystalline grids that we are restoring, reactivating, who here has heard of like the temples of Isis, where Isis temples would literally like entrain priestesses. There was the high priestesses. When we look at ancient civilization, there was high priestesses in Lemuria, in Atlantis, in Maya, in all the ancient civilization, there was literally priestesses, priests, high priestesses, and they were receiving from temples of light. They worked within temples of light and they received codes. And this is how they took their journeys of ascension and their service. Manu tuti ala satai. So when you create an offering, you're literally creating a temple of light for someone to come into and receive the codexes from your soul legacy. And this anchors, now this is when magic happens, the crystalline grids expand. And, and this is when the work is no longer just repairing or reactivating the previous crystalline grid architecture, we expand it. Every mission empire of light anchored onto this planet recreates our world as we know it. And it is how we are creating the fifth dimensional earth. The fifth dimensional earth that is already exists. This is the journey of how the herbs are birthing anew, 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 anew. And for us, we simply activate more temples of light and we open temples of light for others. A lot of your missions now missions are literally to travel to different parts of the world and to call back our like memories from those grids and to work within those grid architectures. Even if we consciously don't know what we're doing, we will go to Egypt and so much will be happening through our avatar vessel, meaning our mission team, our mission family, our multidimensionality will be working through our body to work on the grid architecture. And then we get upgrades at the same time. It's happening through us and in us and all of it's happening. And then of course we have these beautiful temples of light filled with pillars of light. Right now you are in the new earth mission collective temple and you are exploring different codexes, different pillars of light. Of what it means to have a mission in fifth dimensional grid architecture. Kim says last four months you've been to Egypt, Rome, Netherlands, Paris, London, Morocco. Yes. And this is where the more precision then comes with being able to come in to receive the remembering of how to do this. And please know that if this excites you, if you're like, yes, oh my gosh, this is it. Like this, this feels so much more delicious than just building a business. Give me a yes if you're feeling that. You're like, this is just, this is it. This is what I wanted. This is so much fun. Building a business feels really boring. Yes, 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 right? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Mark, Satai. There are so many advanced souls on our planet right now in service. So many yeses coming, coming out. You always felt that, says, yes, exactly. <laughs> I love that, Maya. Absolutely, says Maya. <laughs> Big yes, 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 yes. The more of us that take on this journey, um, the, you know, the more beautiful and graceful Earth's ascension is. And the reason why you're excited by this is because you have had lifetimes. You are technically having them right now in the quantum now. And you've either been a part of building empires, legacy empires of light, which means that you could have been like you could have had multiple lifetimes with Isis. Isis had this really beautiful, rare, um, it's, it's kind of gorgeous. Isis came in 
and the, the Egyptian empire, I guess you could say, was at a collapse. When she first took, when she first took leadership, things were not good. People were suffering. Um, like the empire had fallen. She built the Egyptian empire up to a golden age of existence and then it fell again now it's interesting because there's a lot of us that had lifetimes with her i'm one of them and observed how she did this literally the different stages from complete collapse to golden light then Nasa, my dog says hello There are those of us that took part in Shambhala's ascension journey. Literally, we were a part of the ascension group of Shambhala. We were anchoring the full Shambhalan grid architecture. We were forming the crystalline grids of that civilization. And I can carry this over into every advanced civilization. You have the capacity to build a true mission empire of light, a true soul legacy, just like right now, Isis's legacy stands, even though her empire fell in the physical, please know that it, there is no linear time. And so the golden age existence of her empire of light, full grid architecture exists within the grids of this planet. That's the legacy. Same with Lemuria, same with Atlantis, same with Shambhala. Does this make sense? Same with ancient Africa, same with ancient Greece. There is so much of this. And you, beautiful soul, have the capacity to do this. There's simply more remembering for us. When we go out of the business grid into our soul mission grid, we take the most delicious ascension journey imaginable. And we truly become the builders of the new earth. Nutana sikti alasatai usutai. And so now we would love to invite you, Munuta, to receive a mission grid activation. The mission grid architecture is literally connecting you into a full grid formation which is filled with your mission family your soul codes and directly the architecture itself you can see it as one field it's like one huge you know field like a football field but it's a grid right thanks sharon sharon says i music for her heart <laughs> Nona, 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 naikta alasata utuia. So give me a yes if you're ready to receive this beautiful initiation activation into the chat and we'll begin. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. Placing your hands over your heart, please. So many yeses. Closing your eyes and breathing into your heart through your nose and then out through your mouth. Going in, expanding the heart consciousness out. In, out. We'll be co-creating with many beautiful beings of light today. Relaxing your hands now. We invite you to receive this through your heart field. And we welcome the Lemurian Council of Light who are inviting you to receive a crystal technology. It's a beautiful white crystal of light with an amber hue inside of it. The amber is a crystalline fire technology. It's literally fire in crystal, liquid crystal form. This beautiful crystal it's a liquid crystal of light with an amber liquid crystal fire in it. 
we're going to place this into your heart field for you to be able to receive a heart consciousness expansion and for you to be able to anchor deeper into your mission grid, connecting deeper to your soul. With your permission, we place this into the field now, into your heart consciousness. As this enters, it creates many, many little versions of itself forming a circle around it. So you have the main liquid crystal with all these little ones all around it spinning. And we invite you now to breathe into your heart and with the breath expand your heart field consciousness. So breathe in and expand, breathe out. Take another breath in and expand your heart field and out. One more, expand your heart field and out. And now we're going to invite you to travel into the center of the amber within the main crystal, the beautiful liquid fire, it will not burn you. And as you travel into the center, it takes you into your quantum field, your pure crystalline quantum field. Allowing yourself to settle into this field. And now welcoming around you your mission family, your soul family and your benevolent friends of light from around the earth, the galaxy, the universe. Wherever you have connected to at this point, your friends and family that are serving with you, supporting your ascension and your mission, feel the presence of this big family of light around you. Forming a circular shape with you in the center. And now forming a greater circle around this circle, we come to serve. Some of us are part of your mission family. And around you to support this. Mission grid architecture, fifth dimensional grid work Initiation activation is my 12D family. Many different beings that have let go of their star origins to come into one family, a universe consciousness, a universe family of light, serving you, welcoming the gods and goddesses, the beings of light, the avians, the leopard beings. Nani tu alasati akti alasatai utu as we form a field around you, welcoming to the blue avians. So, who are now placing their crystal white technology all around in a field. There are blue avian crystals forming a circle around you and your mission family. I now welcome my beautiful dragon family. Shifu, the dragon of oneness. She is a white, beautiful dragon with golden eyes and blue. Gold features. She now breathes a ring of white flame all around coupling up with the blue avian crystal architecture. And this is creating a field of pure light. 
welcoming Kohir, the dragon of the New Earth Mission Collective. This is a beautiful black dragon with green eyes. Oh, he is the custodian. He breathes a black flame around your field. Where your circle with your soul family is in the center and this is happening as a perimeter. The black flame is coding in the higher realms. This is a dragon technology that enables us to support you to build an anchor and stabilize a grid that is built in the higher realm realities of pure light. Thank you, dear friends. And now we connect deeper into the lands where you reside, connecting with our elven friends, our fairy friends, the elementals, the spirits of the land, asking for co-creation, permission and support to anchor these new frequencies that are being built into the physical land, to project this into the physical land and to serve with pure light. We thank you, dear family, brothers and sisters. We connect to the tree people, the tree, the plant kingdom, asking for co-creation to anchor, to support the stabilization of this grid work architecture. Connecting to the mineral kingdom, to prepare, to open. We thank you. Matana i tu ai samati ti 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 hotana mutuala. Connecting to the water. Fields all around you in the ground and on the surface as we connect through the water grids the pure light of the water grids and the elements of water to support this full transition and this architecture build thank you sahti muktu nasati tiala sata the field is now ready and with your permission we would love to support you to build out your mission grid at this point in time with other higher self, other aspects of you. And now a crystalline grid architecture of pure soul, of your soul codex is forming its way all under you, under you and your mission family, as we hold the perimeter for you at this time. And the Andromedan councils of light support sharing codes into your field of architecture building welcoming my friends the codes that create worlds the key codes of grid architecture as we support you Allow yourself to feel this sacred geometry, beautiful grid architecture under you, expanding, holding your whole family of light with so much room. It's like this beautiful vacant field of light. Notice the colors. Notice the codes, the frequencies. This is your home. This is a sovereign grid for you. This is an alternate grid architecture beyond the collective grids. And now connecting this grid into the crystalline grid network, into the aspects of the crystalline grid that you 
have said that you will support in their ascension as you ascend. Linking this up now. Notice what it feels like to be inside of this grid. And now we invite you to expand your consciousness and to perceive temples of light that are now stabilizing, allowing you to now connect to, if you have called back frequencies, memories from a different advanced civilization, tune into that one. And allow yourself to feel a temple of light around you. The temple of light is the codes that you've already received from that civilization in, in, from your soul. And this temple gets to expand and grow as you call back more and more of your memories, the libraries of light from that civilization. Yet for now, be inside of this temple of light. Connect to what? Ancient civilization, this is from. That's right. And now for those of you that have offerings for the world, a beautiful offering that you serve others in, we now invite you to tune into that offering that and allow yourself to now shift into a different location of the grid and allow that offering to form a temple of light around you. That offering's full codex, it's a living consciousness. All the codes that you share when people receive that offering are present. They're literally the bricks that make up the temple of light. Temples of light in the quantum are simply beautiful light codes and geometry. Feel the codes. Feel this beautiful temple of light that is the offering. Allow it to enter your heart. You have a mission together to serve souls. And now stepping out of that temple and be in your grid, notice how much space there is to build, to create. The, as you take your ascension journey further, more and more temples will appear. Some of you will see more temples now that you can explore. And yet there is so many more. This is how you anchor a soul legacy onto this planet by allowing this architecture to fully mature, to stabilize as it is the building blocks of the new earth. Feel your mission family here with you. They serve in your mission grid with you. And when you, when you serve others, you invite them into your mission grid. They literally leave whatever grid they're in and come into your grid as a guest and are able to receive from your universe of light. And then you can lead them into different temples for them to receive. This is why when we create content in fifth dimensional grids, your content that you create online is literally little portals into your grid. Sunaktiala, anytime someone watches a video or reads a blog post, 
they're literally able to enter this grid and receive from its frequency. And if it resonates with them, they can be called to come and spend more time here. No different to how when you go into the grids of a Lemuria and you're calling back more of your divine memory, they can enter your grid and receive from the libraries of light that you share. And you too are traveling when you now you are currently residing in the oneness mission grid, my mission grid, where the New Earth Mission Collective Temple is, yet you are inside of that grid and you're working inside of that grid, creating your own grid architecture. There are grids within grids within grids. This is how we create worlds. And now allow your soul family to surround you allowing one member of your soul family to come meet you now hold your hands they have codes for you and they have a message to share with you about your mission go ahead and receive this now <laughs> Na tu mixa ti ala satayutu maniala. Ta satayutu ma. Tana, 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 tana. Su ukti masita. Na no ti mi si ti ala satai uno si ti 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 ala satai hanuta hanuta naikta ala satai. And we take a big breath into your heart again, and we invite you to travel back through the amber light of the crystal in your heart back into your body now. You might feel a bit dizzy. Allow yourself to just be here, stabilize a little bit. We'll support the calibration and integration. As we now co-create even deeper with the elementals, the spirits of the land, the tree people, the waters, to anchor this grid into the crystalline grids of Earth, of Gaia, of Humanity city ti alahana. Sanikta alasatai. We invite you to come into your body, to twiggle your fingers, your toes, to open your beautiful eyes and look around your new world. The crystal inside of your heart is simply allowing the stabilization of the work that we've done. And with your permission, it will stay with you for a little bit longer to support the integration and stabilization. And if you could please type into the chat, how are you feeling? How does your grid feel? More clearly answer this question. What are a few words that can describe your mission grid? You feel peaceful, yes. Peaceful confidence. Oh, pure love, light, abundance, glorious, clear, focused, empowering, pure light and love, clear, soulgasmic, I like it. I also fell asleep sitting up, yes. Heart, um, oh, they're all coming in so fast, expanding, eternal love, powerful, stillness, oneness, whoa, so lit, I came home, wonderful, heart, oneness, freedom, beautiful, white dragon, oh, message, beautiful. Yes, I love this, I fell asleep sitting up, ha <laughs> ha. No, and this is why we're also sharing the recording with you so you can listen to it again. 
Oh, peace. Beautiful. Getting back into my body at the same time. I feel it's not the same body. Yes. Because you've all shifted into a different avatar body, a different version of you. And we honor you for taking this quantum shift with us. Peaceful, surrounded by light. Oh, I had an amazing physical alignment. It was obviously needed. Thanks to my mission family for this. I feel so centered and full of love. Beautiful. Thank you. Was in golden ages. Oh, 500,000 BC. Beautiful. It felt aligned. Thank you. Compassion with the Yeah, beautiful. Peace, love. Thank you. Yeah. No, I love you, Gabby. Oh, in your mission. Thanks, Donna. Oh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You are so welcome. Oh, Mark DC, Tiala Satai. Nota. Beautiful friends, what I would like to do is take a five minute intermission for you to just go to the toilet or whatever what you may need to do and for me to also just do that as well. And what I'd like to invite you to do is during this five minutes, shake your body out. So even now, let's start doing this together where you shake your hands and your arms, you stand, you shake your bottom. Loosen your jaw. <laughs> Make some noise. Isn't that right, little doggy? Yeah. Shake it out. Just move the body. Yeah, getting up and really like just, you know, shaking it out. Like lift your leg, shake it. Lift your other leg, shake your toes. <laughs> shake it out. Allow your body to receive it all, shift it all. Enter this body. Yeah. And if you can just have a look at your time, it is now 6 50 p.m. here. Hello, my love. Come here. Oh, yeah. We're going to take a five minute little break. And I've got about another half an hour left to share with you the um, of what we came to share. So loving you so much and see you back here in five minutes. Oh, and welcoming you back from your beautiful little intermission. Dum -da -da -dum. And we continue. Sumati Tina Yala Satai Usutai. Before we continue, I'd love to hear from you. What have you loved so far in, you know, in receiving the architecture? the true architecture of how we create a mission empire of light or more accurately, I'm about to tell you how we create the mission empire of light and build it fully. Yet, what have you received so far? Because right now you have the land and now we're about to go into how you build on the land. Yeah. So I just love to know what, what have you loved so far? And I understand it's quantum. I understand you know, we've been together for less than two hours and it feels like, whoa, so much has happened. Yeah, just if you could share, what have you loved so far? What's your biggest gift so far? Jennifer, thank you, Gabby. So resonate with this architecture and, and new creations. Yay. Everything, but really to know that every time we are not sure of what to do next, we know that we are fully divinely guided regardless. Yes, fully supported. Remember, we have done all this before. Yes. Oh, I love that. Michelle, understanding more about the grids. However, all of it, yes, feels so normal, so in my body, awesome. Especially the dragon connections, yay. I have connecting, um, connecting with my soul and mission family, beautiful. Really felt activated with the water, whole body shaking, yes. Love knowing a new way of creating content from 5D. Oh, and there's so much more to share about that. This all goes straight to my soul, resonates with me so much. Clarity of wisdom of our divine truth so much. Oh, yes. Is okay to not work in the 3D model? Yes. That I can just be who I am. Yes. The effect I can have coding the internet with my offerings and videos. Yes. The limit, 
limitless support and that all the magic is real and embodied yes explains why 3d is not working for me love connecting with light family feel so supported beautiful love all of this so amazing so incredible on all levels i love the limitless support from my soul and soul and mission teams yes oh my gosh yes divine timing a kickstart to a new journey and vision i've i've sensed coming through me yes beautiful david okay so as she jumped with jumps with excitement <laughs> Oh, well, there's more deepening connection with my Lemurian soul family. Yes. Love that we are creating sovereign new templates. Yes. The more pain we purge, the more freedom codes we are initiated in. Beautiful. Into high priestess freedom codes. Yes. I can connect to the higher dimensions from this crystalline space within my heart. It's always there. Yes. I feel kept on feeling ancient Atlantis. I felt the connection. Yes. I love this. Oh, and I will read more of them later if there's more that comes through. If you're listening to the recording, feel free to share with us as we send you different emails and whatnot, how this has been for you too. Ancient Greece, yes, amazing. Now, who wants to now go on another journey? We're going to shift a little bit and go to a different aspect of the beautiful um <laughs> we're going to go to a different pillar of light inside of the temple of light we're actually going to visit several different beautiful literal massive pillars of codes within the new earth mission collective um temple so it's like i'm going to take you by the hand and we're just going to go on like a museum tour you know <laughs> let's go says laura who's excited to receive how we build the full empire into the grid architecture yes 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 yay 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 awesome well in that case we'll continue this beautiful transmission on the screen you will see before you a beautiful map this is a gorgeous map configuration. The way that we build a mission empire of light is very firstly, we activate our soul mission grid, which we have just all done. Yet inside of the soul mission grid, we want to expand this beautifully. And what that means is that we continue our own journey of ascension activating deeper connection to our mission team deeper connection and activating more of our mission templating within our soul blueprint so there is a full mission ascension journey to take inside of your soul mission grid now and then everything else how do we take it from a grid with some stuff in it to a full amazing empire of light that looks more like this a huge what appears to be a city of light and this is how so the first thing is remembering how to build 5d infrastructure i'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey today you've been initiated and you've been shown into how we build a fifth dimensional infrastructure with our mission families. And yet we go on an ascension journey to remember more and more and more of this. And it is important that we can create and build architecture ourselves and call back the codes around this. And this is why today we shared this with you. This is why today, globally, publicly, we did what we do when souls come into the New Earth Mission Collective or the Mission Empire Builder Journey. We supported you to activate your soul mission grid and started to give you codes and rememberings and initiations on building 5D infrastructure because 
This is part of your mission. It is part of your mission to build inside of fifth dimensional grid work and to build the architecture that's fifth dimensional and then turn that into physical form. And so that takes me into the other side of this, which is mission offerings. We supported you today to birth or enter and expand a mission offering to go into one of your offerings that you currently have and to allow it to turn into a temple of light. And this is because it is important for you to know that first you create inside of your mission grid architecture, you create the architecture in the grid first, meaning that if you're creating an offering, as you're, you know, dreaming up a beautiful offering to give to the world, you are inside of your mission grid and you call the offering in. It's a co-creation. We don't create with our mind, we create with our heart. And what that means is we're actually unifying with the already existing offering. We're calling the offering consciousness in. And then we co-create the offering with the offering soul, consciousness. Every one of your mission offerings is an extension of you. So like your soul, has a you and then has another version of you in Atlantis or Lemuria or insert anything or on a planet other than this one, your soul, our soul is literally having all of these experiences and all of them are us. Yeah. Our mission offerings are following that same architecture that we are literally extending and birthing another aspect of ourself, which shares our soul frequency. And it is another living consciousness. We are part of a collective consciousness configuration. That is the truth of our existence. Yet when we come to this planet in 3D form, our ego, we feel that there's this experience of separation, this experience of it's me, and me is the only thing that's real, yeah? Yet the truth is there's many, many, many different consciousness streams and what is real is the soul. The soul is what we're embodying more. And so I'd love for you to feel this, that humakti siti alasatai, your mission offerings are literally fractals of your soul consciousness, which means that when we create them, when we birth them, and when we support them to anchor and to be strong and healthy, we do this with love. In the 3D business grid, people create products and if they don't work out fast enough, they let those products go and they create something else and they're chasing something else. Give me a yes if you've seen this, that people can go from product to off product, offering to offering, that there isn't a reverence yeah, it's not like they're, imagine if our soul was to literally pull out <laughs> from us because we, you know, weren't panning out in the first three months. <laughs> Pretty funny, right? And so I share this because when we have a mission empire of light, we birth offerings with precision. We create, we take our codexes and we form something into existence and we stay with that offering. Now, the difference between a mission offering and a product in 3D grids is a mission offering is a living fractal of us. It is literally a fractal of our soul and it will grow and ascend with us, which means we need to be very comfortable with changing the architecture infrastructure of the way that that offering shows up. So for example, when we look at the New Earth Mission Collective, I cannot even begin to tell you how much it has changed over the years, how the delivery has changed. Yeah, that when I download and receive, when the New Earth Mission Collective Temple and I are co-creating and there is a, okay, now it's time to add another piece to it. So then all of a sudden it's like, cool, 
and there's another webinar ran every single month that's covering a very specific codex and it wasn't the case last month and this month this is what it wants to the configuration changes does this make sense we have to be willing to change and adapt it is not fixed it is not controlled it is not linear it is not in a box it's a living sovereign being and to be flexible with the way it wants to shift give me a woohoo if that resonates if you can fully resonate with the fact that your offerings don't want to be stagnant that they actually want to change maybe you have even felt in the past an offering you know woohoo 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 awesome who here has ever had an offering that all of a sudden stopped resonating like you stopped resonating or you stopped having as much excitement with that offering the um yes 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 and this is why because if we don't like if we don't take on the codex of taking our offerings out of the 3D business grid into our soul mission grid and allowing them to be sovereign fractals, then we want to keep them behaving the way they've always behaved. And we're not open to their transformation. And when we're not open to their transformation, we the, the resonance is not there. It's like we're trying to make the offering wear old clothes that don't fit it, fit, fit it anymore. Imagine trying to make a five-year-old wear the clothes of a two-year-old. They wouldn't fit. Does this resonate? Yep. And so often what will happen is people will let go of the offering. And that would be like, Imagine your soul letting go of one of the versions of you. Eh, I'm just going to, you know, just throw Gabby away because she's boring now. <laughs> Wouldn't happen. Instead, what we do is we allow our offerings to evolve and ascend and transform. And sometimes they completely change form. So, for example, I used to have an offering called the Abundance Codes, the Money and Abundance Codes. It was an 18-month um, mastermind living mastermind the and then it wanted to transform it wanted to be shared more with the world and we took all the recordings and put them into little mini courses and now on my website the that particular codex is a digital offering and people can access it as a self-study does that make sense like it wanted to transform in that configuration and we want to know like we want to be able to communicate we want to be able to shift Sometimes there'll be a live event component with what I do, and sometimes it's just online and there's shifts. Does this make sense? This is the difference. Our mission offerings are living fractals of our own soul, and we stay with them. We do whatever it takes to learn how to help them anchor, because every mission offering that anchors and stabilizes is then fully activating an aspect of the crystalline grid, fully expanding it. All of our mission offerings are working on the architecture, the infrastructure of this planet. It's part of our mission to hold them. And yet in the 3D business grid, people throw their offers away if they don't sell enough. We learn how to hold them. Sometimes we birth an offering and that offering needs to stabilize into the grids before anyone will come into that temple to receive. And it could be a few months of you holding sharing codes, you know, does that make sense? Calling people in to that offering and allowing it to reconfigure the grid architecture. Literally our offerings do grid work first before they can truly open and be ready for souls to come and receive from them in the fifth dimensional grids. In 3D grids, that's not the case. Makes a lot of sense, awesome. I want to talk about offering temples right now. So right now we live in a time point where we are still needing currency. We are still functioning with money currency. And that means that we require money to feed ourselves, to house ourselves, all of those things. And so a part of the mission empire of light, and by the way, it's a part, is having these beautiful mission offering temples that people can come and contribute to your mission empire of light. Please know that in the mission empire of light, we do not sell. It is not profit. 
it's it's not it's a completely different system the profit system exists within the 3d grids it exists within the matrix of the 3d grids the whole association with that network when we shift out of the public system and reclaim our sovereignty and we anchor into our own sovereign grids we are no longer selling something or giving it a price we are attributing a um, more of a contribution of energy that we would like as an exchange so what that means is that people will come and they will give a contribution of money you know in order to come into our temple and receive does that resonate now this is what enables us if we don't have another source of resources to have our mission receive financial resources and so the mission temple offerings are literally bringing in resources into the whole mission empire of light because there are other parts to having a mission empire of light one of them is portal and grid work that's over here where we are missioned to open portals or um, hold portals of light work on grids all over the planet hold grids support the libraries of light to be birthed no one pays us physical money for this this is all happening beyond the, the in the fifth and above dimensions does this make sense and yet at the same time if you're being called to travel to a different place in the world but you can't afford the flights or the accommodation you can't take that mission you're not walking along the highest, most joyful timelines of your ascension and mission. And so this is why we can have mission offering temples of light where people can come and contribute. Yes? I trust this serves. The other piece to this, when I go back to building 5D infrastructure, is we have missions to build very specific new things within the 5D grid. So for example, some of you would know that I have built and created Magic School for Kids, for Teens and Kids, which is a free online Ascension platform. We have a membership site filled with many transmissions and beautiful souls, some of who are literally here right now that are teaching classes, I teach classes, and we keep recording and adding to the Library of Light for kids and teens to be able to have a library to come to and this is part of building 5d infrastructure i received a mission directive to build this architecture and so i have built this architecture and it will continue serving and growing and there's mm, oh my gosh it's only this it's only that much of its journey at the moment we're about to start a huge is like the the next few months we'll be calling in so many children from all over the world as we have built up so much of the library now yet this also does not pay money <laughs> meaning i actually fund this it costs me thousands and like thousands of dollars every month to run magic school for kids and then volunteers come and they serve and it's part of their portal and grid work architecture and it's part the volunteers that are coming to serve this is part of them building a 5d infrastructure does that make sense we can literally work in other architecture and be and and our empires of light our mission empires of light join up and this is how each empire of light is coming together and we it's the whole thing comes into unification so please know that your mission grid and your mission empire of light is not solo it's connected interconnected and because it's multi-dimensional not linear it's connected to many other mission empires of light and that then takes me to your mission team your mission team is not just non-physical your mission team is physical too there are beautiful earthlings on this planet that are mission to co-create with you so the ones that have come to magic school for kids and are literally running classes or doing other stuff we have a mission their mission empires and my mission empire are literally co-creating like this creating architecture together this is us building 5d infrastructure um, together isn't that cool and then i've got mission team who have who are also serving you know, as beautiful channels and coaches inside of the New Earth Mission Collective, Magic School, Codex of Abundance, Mission Empire Builder. In my mission offering temples, there are beautiful souls. They're part of the mission team. They're all 
powerful beings with their own mission empires of light. And together we are co-creating, which takes me to this pillar, co-creating and service. We co-create. So what that means is that within the mission empire of light, we co-create with Gaia, with the tree net network, the elementals, we co-create with our beautiful mission family, other star races and other beautiful mission souls on the planet to fully build and structure everything out to anchor new codes. This is the difference though. In the 3D business grid, people collaborate often you might see this they'll collaborate to share platform what that means is is you know you'll often see that there's like um and there's nothing wrong with this please know i love the business grid i'm simply just in an aspect of my journey where i'm complete with it i thank it for everything that i got to play in there um, with and now i move forward with my ascension with pure love in my heart for the grid. So I feel to really um, emphasize that yet in the mission grid, sorry, in the in the 3D business grid, the subconscious driver for co-creation is not co-creation, it's collaboration. It's coming in with somebody so you can get something out of it. It's a I'll scratch your back if you scratch my back, even if consciously the people are heart centered and they want to make a difference subconsciously the they will invite people to for example you know like you could run a global free summit where all these different speakers come in and often what will happen is speakers with big platforms will be called in because they are then sharing an invitation to that summit with their platform with their tribe with the people that they have called in to their mission to their mission empire and then the person that's running the summit gets more people to come into their platform, their email list. Yeah. Does this make sense? Give me a yes. If you're following that the driver is to expand their own lists. They're not necessarily looking for someone with no following who is talented to come and speak on their platform. They're looking for the ones that look really good in the 3d the ones that have succeeded. Yeah. Because in the 3d business grid, um, have you, you know, have you made lots of profit? Yay, come hang out with me, you know, show others how you've done that. By the way, nothing wrong with that. I'm doing this with a bit of play and fun, yet it's a completely different universe. In the 5D grid, we can still create and co-create. We're just not looking at scratch my back, scratch your back. We get a soul directive. And we could find ourselves coming into co-creation and wanting to put on a summit with someone who's got no friggin' following, but we, are, we know that we are to transmit something with them, that we're to share something with them. Does this resonate that the soul connects us with someone and it's time to action a mission? So for example, in the New Earth Mission Collective, the souls in the New Earth Mission Collective and I literally have formed a collective consciousness and we work on the grids of the planet. We do little missions together. So we come together and we'll work inside of different grids as a collective, hoo, 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 literally working in those grids. Without personal gain, we are doing portal and grid work. No one's paying us for it, yet we've been missioned to come together to do this work. A few of us um, are literally flying off to Greece, you know, in a few months. And I'm so excited. I still like pinch myself at the fact that I've got souls that have been receiving from the New Earth Mission, um, you know, like beautiful temple of light codes across time, and they've become friends. And some of them have already left the temple, they've received the codes and they've continued on the journey. Some of them are still in the beautiful temple and we are going to Greece together. And then some of us are going to Egypt together and we're literally opening up libraries of light together. This is cool. Do you feel the difference of the co-creation that here we co-create because our soul and soul, like the mission has come online. Over there, there's collaboration. You know, it's like, hey, yeah, you definitely, you feel it. Beautiful. We also build mission wealth. And this is a big part. 
It's having our mission empire be wealthy with time and money resources, that there's so much space for you because you are the leader of this mission empire. You're to lead it. And yet many others are to come and co-create and serve within it. It's not all us. And so we expand our physical team. We expand our mission wealth, which means we increase our abundance quota. We increase our capacity to be able to hold and receive more and more currency and resources because we are meant to have resources to build the 5D architecture, to go and work on the grids. We've got other missions that are beyond products. You know what I mean? That in a business, the only thing that we do, honestly, is create products, make them better, innovate, get great at sales and marketing and build ourselves a very, like very, you know, affluent um, empires. And those affluent empires will often, uh, this is pretty funny, will often donate money to certain causes, yet quite a lot of them do this, not because it's true for them, it's because they get tax deductions and because it makes their brand look good subconsciously consciously they could be really loving that they're backing a charity subconsciously the templating is the driver of it is for branding yeah and sometimes very consciously too and so mission wealth and having the empire be a golden age empire of light is extremely abundant. When we look at the golden ages, they're all abundant. And I'm not even talking just a million dollars. I'm talking really abundant, you know, well beyond those figures. Maya says, this is the universe my soul's been long, longing to play in. Yes, so happy. Funny that I'm listening in from the business school at the University College in Dublin. <laughs> I love it. Anchoring all of this into that grid. Thanks. <laughs> and that takes me to going back into our mission offerings. I spoke about how we no longer market. Instead, we do offering grid work. And so what that means is that all, you know, all of the content creation is literally us sharing aspects of the codes. And what this means is you would go into the offering temple and you would take some of, imagine an offering temple is like a big library filled with lots and lots of books of codes, cool. And you would literally take one of the books from the mission offering temple and you would share aspects of that book online for free, which means you make that book public. And so aspects of your mission offering te um, temple are public. Does that make sense? You'd make like 5% of it public yeah, um, so people can open and receive. We don't do this for sales. We do this because the mission temple instructs us to share certain aspects into the full global grid. Yeah. And then of course, that if the people that are receiving those like you know like right now you are accessing aspects of the new earth mission empire temple of light does that make sense and you're receiving the codes and it's changing you forever and those codes are then anchoring into the crystalline grids all over the planet we are changing the full infrastructure of this planet right now <laughs> the this is what offering grid work is. It's sharing this way. It's literally sharing actual codes, actual in like actual pieces. It's really beautiful. Yeah. And it's always a co-creation. Yeah. You're welcome. And what we do here is we would take the skills of marketing. There's many, many, many different pieces to it. And we would bring them into the grid. And then they get translated, all of them ascend, all of them evolve. So this is a completely different codex to the codex that can be learned in the business grids. Yeah, very different coded content, coded, beautiful events like this. 
This event that I am running is literally a tour of the New Earth Mission Collective Temple. We have created an opening of the New Earth Mission Collective Temple for you to come and enter and be inside of the pillars of light, receive from the codes. We've opened it to the public. It's open day. <laughs> the, and for the purpose of sharing these codes through many beautiful beings, supporting everyone in their missions because the guidance came that it was time to share this that there was many, many souls that needed to have their soul mission grid activated and that would set them on new timelines and that would support the whole collective and that would also support the photon light expansion that's happening on the planet right now, that the work that we're doing is working on so many levels. It's like, whoa, you know? And then, we look at timeline guidance. So remember how I said that in the business grid, it's sales and in the mission grid, it's timeline guidance. Timeline guidance means that we receive the codes to navigate timelines, that we're able to connect to a soul's frequency and see the timelines available for them, feel the timelines available for them, feel their frequency signature and know if the temple, our offering is actually in harmonic resonance for them and be able to guide them yeah so it's like we talk to them we scan and then we suggest okay my recommendation for you is for you to come into the new earth mission collective temple of light and receive this to work on every one of these pillars to build your full crystalline empire of light anchor it onto the planet and be one of the full pioneers of the new earth or my recommendation is for you to come into the mission empire builder. So, or another offering, does this resonate? So if you've got multiple offerings and then sometimes it's to say, well, at this time, there's no recommendation for you to come and receive from one of these offerings to enter one of these temples of light. However, can recommend that you do X, Y, Z. And then once you've done that, come back to us and see if you're ready then. It is okay to give a soul a recommendation to somebody else and not try and fix everyone's things. Not everyone belongs in your temples. And then that takes me to offering grid work. When we do proper offering grid work, we are building pathways of light all throughout the quantum, which are coded to call in the soul signature frequency of the souls that we're to serve. Over like almost 500 people registered to come and receive this transmission. Um, and all we did was share about it for a few days and invite people, you know, I share this with you because what that means is that within the people that have already found their way into my beautiful mission empire of light grid architecture, there was close to 500 people that were in harmonic resonance to receive this transmission. This transmission and the conversation we, ha we are having is very advanced. <laughs> it's not for everyone. Does this make sense? And yet because of the offering grid work that I have done over, a, over years, there you have found your way onto these paths and the precision of your frequency is like really precise. All the people that are inside of my temples, oh my God, they are the, the free, like the amount of times we will run a transmission and the people will be like, oh my gosh, this is like, it's just it's like you keep channeling just for me, you know? And this is why, this is why we do offering grid work. This is why we share our code. This is why gridding the internet with our frequency is more important than the leads and the sales because we know once the grid work is actualized, the souls will walk along the paths because we're literally building a grid of light with our codes which are paths of light that souls can find their way walking straight to us. Give me a yes if that resonates. If you're like, yep, that makes perfect sense, please. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, right, and it's different. Thank you. And now that takes me to the other aspect of building a mission empire of light that's legacy and that is our own evolution and ascension. And this one's actually the most important. If we are not evolving and ascending, if we are not consciously devoted, taking that journey, you know, deeply, then 
our mission empire is not growing. Our mission empire grows every time we have an upgrade, we have an ascension. Val writes, being in Gabby's Temple of Light is amazing. I've I've met so many amazing new friends and I have evolved and continue to evolve so quickly. Thank you, my love. Thank you, Bell. Love you. And now, so what happens is with every evolution, with every ascension, our literal mission empire grows. More temples come online. So as we call back more of our multidimensionality, here's another temple and another temple and another temple. Temples that weren't there yesterday are there today because we are evolving and ascending. Evolution means that we are calling back our multidimensionality, activating more of our dormant capabilities. This avatar is powerful. And as it's evolving and ascending, transforming into its fourth, fifth dimensional expression, it has more and more capabilities, which then reflect in the mission empire of light and have it look like the most beautiful crystalline golden city ever. As we ascend, we are able to hold more light, love quota, abundance quota, peaceful quota. And this also expands our whole empire. And this, my dear friends, is how we leave a soul legacy on this planet by creating and anchoring a divine mission empire of light through this journey. Now, if you are in a position where resources aren't flowing to your highest excitement, then your focus is actually going to be on mission offerings, timeline guidance, offering grid work, and mission wealth. You put more of your attention into that part of your mission empire. And that's that's not to exclude evolution and ascension, please. Um, please let me include that. And so what that means is that once your soul mission grid is activated, you go into it and you build all of this up. You put more attention here. It doesn't mean you don't put attention here. It just means that if you put all of your attention here, you will run out of money. And that's it. Who here, give me a yes, has run out of money as they've been building their mission businesses? Yes, 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 right? And so, yes, 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 yes. And the focus, therefore, for you is this part of the codex, this part of the empire. And so, once this part of the empire is pretty solid, we get to do all of this whoa like so with so much more joy and fun because we've got the resources to travel the world first class and do portal work grid work we've got the time to sit in the quantum call back and build quantum architecture we can devote a few hours a day literally just building quantum architecture because we have this running beautifully for us we can build a mission team because we have the resources to pay them. Yeah, we can we have time and expanded time to co-create and build other things and just do beautiful things. And so this is why we um, created inside of the New Earth Mission Collective Temple. There is a section to the temple that focuses on these offering grid work, timeline guidance, mission offerings, evolution, ascension, and mission wealth. And that section is called the Mission Empire Builder section. I have literally got an offering called the Mission Empire Builder where the souls that come into that offering work on this and only this. And that doesn't mean that there aren't little aspects of this that are fed through, but it's like an 80-20, yeah, or even a 90-10 to be honest. Huge focus here with a little bit here. And then in the New Earth Mission Collective, the whole thing is open for the souls that can hold all of it and build all of it. And so if you would love to join us and take this journey and be supported to build all of this out, we would then guide you. We'd have a phone call with you and we would guide you and we would feel which you know, what pathway is actually in the highest resonance for you. You could start in the Mission Empire Builder, part of the temple, and then within like within a few months, you could actually shift and access the full thing and shift into the full grid. And we guide this in great precision. 
I wanted to share that because it's some of you are also going to have temples that have these aspects where you can have a main offering and then inside of that offering there could be sections of codex I see these as pillars so inside of the new earth mission collective grid temple of light each one of these is literally a pillar like I kid you not this is what it looks like so imagine that pillar is the uh, 5d infrastructure pillar this pillar is the soul offerings pillar this pillar is the well mission wealth pillar does that make sense all of the all of the pillars that are inside of the temple are filled with codes all the codes all the templates for that particular whole section yeah and you may find that when you like really um, take the journey of understanding how to de decipher your mission offering temple how it's structured to know where the codexes sit and placing all of it you may find that you would have an offering within an offering that some people can come in and receive from three pillars and then if they wish to receive from the other eight they can or they can just complete their journey with you here isn't that beautiful give me a yes if this resonates if you're digging this way if it feels in harmonics for you to co-create this way yes 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 beautiful and so gorgeous souls this is the whole section and I just wanted to share with you that those of you that um, are currently in a place where you would like to expand your resource abundance please focus on these sections please focus on having the most precise mission offering temple that you know it in and out getting really awesome at timeline guidance and getting masterful at offering grid work so you can pave out beautiful pathways of light for others to find your temple to be able to come please continue evolving and ascending expanding your abundance quota and you oh my gosh this is what's the priority for you yeah and now we come to completion we have shared with you what we wanted to share with you and we want to say we love you for taking this beautiful journey with us and at this point if you are complete you can simply send some love in the chat and come off if any of you would like to find out a little bit more about joining the beautiful the beautiful new earth mission collective temple or the mission empire builder temple then I ask you to stay for a few minutes and I'll tell you a little bit more as to how man says when I first listens to these when I first listened to these transmissions I didn't quite get it but I still felt drawn to them now I'm starting to understand thank you so much everything about you and what you do is beautiful thank you and I love that you've shared this if you guys go to my website there's a page called free resources and in it there's like 17 different transmissions like this and in it you'll see that there's an evolution of the codes that we've been sharing from the New Earth Mission Collective Temple. Literally, there's one called Beyond Business, there's one called A Mission Empire of Light. And if you listen to them, they, like, they, they've been doing grid work. So if you go back to the one from, does that make sense? Like if you go all the way back, you'll, like, you'll see the grid we've been building with them. Every transmission shares the next layer and the next layer and people come receive the codes we anchor them into the grids and that's what enables us to have yet a new transmission to share with the next beautiful time that we open this up isn't that cool and I love that man says this she's like hey the first time I came I was like what and now because she's integrated you know because you've integrated the codes from the others you're able to receive this one isn't it cool Hotana shunatiala satai Oh, loving you so much. I booked yesterday the activated business is that part of the new earth mission. Oh, beautiful. So the um if if you're saying that you purchased the activated business mini course, the um that does have some of the codes from this and can definitely support you. It is a self-study. What is the link to your website, please? Beautiful. One sec, my love. 
So this is the link to the page that shows you the beautiful temples that I hold and you can check them out. Deep gratitude and to your soul family. Every time you giggle, it lights me up. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> And she giggles again just for you. Love your cute little laugh too. Thanks. <laughs> your whole John is a cute little laugh. It's a strong, charismatic, powerful laugh. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. I have so much deep understanding of grids and timelines now. Some of some I had a deep knowing about already with so much gratitude. Thank you. Link not coming through. Oh, one sec, babe. Everyone's because I just sent it to myself. I've just shifted it. There's the link. We're also going to send you an email with the recording and the link to um, find out more about all the things is there as well. Cool. And so now with your permission, I would like to shift gears and oh, I'd like to um, just talk to any one of you that is feeling a deep calling to truly build and lead a mission empire of light. And by the way, what this means is you could already have built quite a sustainable empire within the business grid and we support the transition of every part of it. Or you could still be in the early stages and we simply support you to build within the grids. It is different to building a business. It's completely different. The, it's like there is a benefit to having some of the knowledge in the business grid in some ways, yet to be honest, I find that this is pretty funny. There's also a lot to undo. Like there's a lot of upgrades. It's like upgrade this, upgrade that. And there'll be a lot of changes that happen to the structures, upgrades. Like it's not huge. It's just like, it's not like it's, oh my God, I've got to redo everything. It's more, there's a shift. Everything has to be shifted to the other grid, upgraded, and everything transforms before our eyes. So I just wanted to share that. The humak tiala satai unutiala. This is a beautiful visual activator. This is the soul code of the New Earth Mission Collective Temple of Light. And inside of here, you'll actually see the whole purpose that its purpose is to support souls to activate their own mission grids and then build their temples of light within them, coded light libraries. And this is creating the full architecture of 5D Gaia holding and stabilizing her timelines, co-creating with Gaia at such a, oh my gosh, you know, such a beautiful divine level and having us anchor and stabilize our soul consciousness in a way that for me blows my mind every time. This is the most beautiful, the most rewarding work. I, I couldn't have even imagined it you know, when my mission was activating, how beautiful all of this would be, how much joy. Every one of my missions is so fun and playful. This, you know, delivering this event for you all. Oh my gosh, like this is just the best. How much fun have we had today? And we've literally regridded the planet together. Like, yes, you know. And so my invitation is for you to look into this image, to look into this visual activator, and to allow the light language through it to come into your heart field. And feel the frequency of being inside of the New Earth Mission Collective Temple of Light. And if you would love to come and receive and come into the temples, and be guided, be supported, have me and my whole mission team as part of your mission team. Because as soon as you say yes to enter one of my temples, your mission team expands and I and my team join you and we work together. And of course, I share the codes with you for you to be totally independent to do all of this, all of the codes to work in all the aspects, to have the most abundant, beautiful mission empire of light and to live a life of pure, gorgeous joy. Naikta alasatai. Yes, 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 I'm receiving. And so here are the next steps for you. I shared with you the link in the chat. I'll share it again. Yet you can also just find my website on every social media channel and your next part is to 
book a call. So what we do is we do timeline guidance calls. Gabby, do we have calls with you in your programs? The, um, do you mean, do you have like, yes, 100%. So in all of my programs, I come on and I share and I coach and what, this is a taste of what it's like exactly to, to be with me. And there's also other souls that serve as well supporting and having the whole thing work so we have other beautiful beings that also support in them who marked the other side great question what you can do is when you go into my website you can click on the new earth mission collective link and there you'll click on a brochure that you can download and just read the brochure as it shares with you all the different features and bits and pieces in the new earth mission collective I run four live events per year. They're run from my home, which is a temple of light. And what I mean by that is this home has a full quantum architecture built around it. It's a 5D dome. When you enter it, foof, the frequencies are powerful. It is working and stabilizing the crystalline grids of the planet. You also learn how to do this too and how to build your own temples, have your homes and other, yeah, just be full, pure temples of light that are harmonized to your frequency, supporting your ascension and other beings that come in literally instantly receive so much. Now, with the New Earth Mission Collective, the New Earth Mission Collective souls are welcome to come and stay in my home with me when I run these events and we spend beautiful time together. It's just a beautiful family of light. And then in between those events, there's weekly beautiful transmissions um, two of those transmissions are with me, where I run a half day event, a good four plus hours with me sharing, building, and woof, it's super fun and expansive. And then another event with me is called the round table, where we sit around a round table architecture and the different souls come off mute sharing. And we channel through all the pieces and do all the grid work and building. It's profound. We are a collective consciousness. We, that's, we are a collective of mission consciousness. And what that means is there's no hierarchy. We've come together as a family of light. This is truly a family of light working together, supporting each other. And I'm simply sharing all these codes and architectures, yet every being is profoundly incredible. Now, within my other offerings, within the Mission Empire Builder offering, for example, I do still run events every couple of months, yet my team takes care. So in the New Earth Mission Collective, we've got a coach who's been working with me for years. She's phenomenal, and she runs roundtables as well, supporting the beautiful souls in their ascension and the anchoring of their own light quota, their light codes. Within the Mission Empire Builder, we have beautiful coaches working one-on-one -on -one and in group formations and the beautiful souls work within the libraries, receiving the videos, working on projects, receiving, it's a lot to receive, the arm um, on how to do it all with the precision of a coach and then I come in and channel in and stream more, more beautiful codes for them. We created the Mission Empire Builder to be accessible for souls who are limited in their financial resources and require the codes to be able to truly build out the abundance in their mission. And so therefore, there is more um, work to do in the membership site. It's supported more by team and I come in every couple of months to do a beautiful every, yeah, um, every few months to do a big transmission. The investment, um, what sort of price is this? So the Mission Empire Builder um, is, oh gosh, one second. I don't normally do this. So my beautiful souls, we do have a gorgeous being that will take you on a timeline deep dive and we'll look into and connect with your mission families and look to see because we've got magic school which is another mission activation ascension journey codex of abundance which is another journey we've got several i'm sharing this with you because maktiala it is really important that you have this beautiful call with our with our course guide mal who is just a powerful channel and she's been trained and encoded in timeline guidance and she will guide you through the pieces. When we look at your contribution, 
The contribution to the Mission Empire Builder, I believe, is eight and a half thousand Australian dollars, and we have payment plans as well. I believe that our payment plans start at about seven hundred and fifty Australian dollars, which is just under five hundred US dollars per month. The um. The, I might be slightly off with those figures by a few dollars. Please don't quote me 100% on that. It's not my role inside of the Mission Empire of Light to be going deep with all of that. I don't do the timeline guidance. Mel does the timeline guidance um, section of the beautiful mission. And then the New Earth Mission Collective is a much bigger grid. And that particular grid um, the current contribution for the New Earth Mission Collective is 35,000 Australian dollars. I don't know what that is in, um, in, in USD currency. It might be like 20 something, you know, 22,000, something like that. And it allows you to stay within the grid for one whole year where my team and I work with you continuously. And it's more of a semi-private container as well. It's profoundly beautiful. We do have payment plans for that one as well. Roughly, the um, I believe, don't quote me on this, however, I believe it's just under 2000 per month Australian the, um, to be able to do that. And there's other payment plans too that you can discuss. And we also have finance options. I trust that answers your beautiful question, Nikki. Mukta Alasa, please give me a yes if that answers your question. The most important piece to us is that you feel the frequency call you and that you do book a call. It is really important, you're welcome. The, it's really important to us that we match you with the, right, with the most precise temple of light the, um, and that's why we chat with you. These calls are also really powerfully transformative meaning that this is literally having a beautiful channeled session the, and receiving many different messages and pieces for your own ascension and your, and your mission journey. And for some of you, it could also be sharing with you a different pathway to take first before you come into one of these temples and for your heart to be open. Some of you could be really excited about chatting about the New Earth Mission Collective and yet you'll be guided to um the magic school you know first because in magic school you go to quantum school and you call back so much of your multi-dimensionality gifts codes you become a fully activated multi-dimensional being and from there when you join the new earth mission collective it's like you know does that resonate so that's my recommendation please do book the calls and of course, please only book the calls if you're in a situation where you can, you know, contribute a good 500 US per month into a journey. The, um, and if not, like on my website, we've got a free resource tab. There's like 17 beautiful transmissions there for free. Sit there, receive. On YouTube, there are so many different beautiful transmissions, coded transmissions to receive. Receive them with this one. Receive the recording again. You know, that whole transmission we took you through when you got to go into your mission, beautiful offering temple. Go into your temple. You know, do the best you can. You can also purchase Activate Your Mission Business as a digital online course for, I believe, $700 on the, on the website. The, um, there's also abundance code. There's, there's other things to do if currency is not as abundant for you at this stage the, um, of your journey. And of course, so much that we continue to share online as we continue allowing aspects of the libraries to be shared. I trust that serves. Emily says, can we do quantum speaking separately? It's oh, a beautiful question. Yes. So it's actually interesting you should say that we're in the process over the next three months to update our beautiful online library. Um, there'll be like an extended, an expansion of our website being, um, being shared with the world. And there's, there'll be mini courses that we'll be sharing, mini courses such as quantum speaking, learning how to, which are from the New Earth Mission Collective Library, learning how to be a quantum speaker, 
the and all the pieces around it multi-dimensional quantum marketing as a separate course there, there'll be a whole bunch of different mini courses so please also keep an eye out for them over the next three to four months yay and Emily if you're wishing to receive that then you can totally reach out and um, and we can yeah we can let you know how all of that can happen too and so gorgeous souls and once again adding the link in inside of the link just go to the new earth mission collective tab scroll down to the tab that says book a course um, a consultation and click it fill it in book the call and oh my gosh you know oh, I would love to co-create with you so you never know I could find you in one of my temples in the next few days. <laughs> I love you all so much. Thank you so much for co-creating. Thank you for receiving this with your open hearts. Thank you for supporting the anchoring of this beautiful codex onto the grids of this planet. You are incredible. I feel your energy and it's like, whoa, big, big, big hugs from us to you. So much love. So much thanks coming through as well. I receive all of that. Lots of love. Come on, little dog of light. Dog of light says thank you. And we say good night. Well, it's good night for us. Good morning for some of you. So much love. See you all soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Yay, we did it. Woo. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> dog of light. I love you. Woo.